Here in Elgin, a village about 45 minutes outside of Moncton, people gathered on a beautiful fall day in October to release hundreds of mature salmon into the heart of the Petticodiac River watershed. The inner Bay of Fundy population of Atlantic salmon has declined so much they're considered endangered. The salmon are being transferred from this container truck behind me into smaller uh, containers in pickup trucks. One's pulling in right now as we speak. And later this afternoon, uh, the fish will be released uh, into the waterway a short distance from here, um, following a uh, ceremony led by a local Mi'kmaq elder. In the 1980s, wild salmon populations were hit by a significant decline throughout the Atlantic region, especially the inner Bay of Fundy population, which is listed as endangered under the Species at Risk Act. Blamu is the Mi'kmaq word for salmon. The relationship between wild Atlantic salmon and the indigenous people here in New Brunswick is profound. Amlemgug, or Fort Folly First Nation, is a Mi'kmaq community in southeast New Brunswick. It's at the forefront of an effort to restore the species of migratory fish. The significance in the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program for my community of Omlongo First Nation or Fort Folly is paramount. Um, the salmon has always been a really important species to, to all of us as Mi'kmaq people in New Brunswick. And it just so happens that our population is the endangered one, so it's no longer a part of our traditional diet. It's, it's not as prevalent as it should be in our way of life. Um, our salmon are the, the endangered salmon, the inner Bay of Fundy Atlantic salmon. So if we were to want to be able to fish salmon for our traditional diet, we have to go either to Miramichi or to Oxford, which is another salmon, Atlantic salmon bearing river. So to, to see the, the, the salmon restored in this way, um, how does it feel? I have been a part of the salmon recovery since probably 2002, so I've been in it for a while. And to see these numbers come back into our rivers is nothing that I ever expected. The, the numbers were so far gone that there was no hope. But then there kind of was a spark, and the spark of hope is what made this program what it is today. It's what's bringing our salmon back to our rivers so that someday, my, maybe my great-grandchildren will have salmon back in their rivers as part of their traditional diet. The ceremony just took place to, to bless the water, to, to receive the, the fish. Yes. So right. a water blessing is done um, by our people to give thanks to the water, to give thanks to the blamu, which is salmon, um, to give them a good start, to celebrate that these fish are being put back in their homes to to celebrate the water that takes care of, of all of us and it's a way of us to celebrate that connection that we have with the fish and with the water and I mean it all comes full circle when you put the fish in the water um, so it's it's important for us to remember our ways as well it's another way for us to honor our ancestors and bring them in when we're doing such events is there anything that you'd like to add? Uh, no, just thank you. Just we're all someone's seventh generation. We're always, we always talk about seven generations going forward, but we all often forget that we are also someone's seventh, seventh generation. So the work's been done previously for all of us for what we have now. This week we've returned 860 mature uh, interwave of Fundy Atlantic salmon off of the, uh, the marine conservation farm that were reared there, uh, but collected originally as juveniles from the Petticodiac, and then reared to maturity at the uh, um, marine conservation farm at Dark Harbor Grand Manan. So on Wednesday, just the day before yesterday, uh, 415 were, were brought to us by our partners at Cook's Aquaculture and a Big Transport and uh, Fort Folly's trucks and Parks Canada's trucks picked those fish up from a staging area in smaller groups and they were released at various release sites uh, on the Paulette River watershed. And we've got 400 uh, today alone. Yeah, 415 today alone. Yeah, yeah. Great.
So far, these efforts appear to be successful as salmon returns have rebounded in two watersheds in Fundy National Park. People involved in the project also say they're making gains in the watershed of the Petakodiak River, which runs through Moncton, New Brunswick's largest city. That river system used to yield about 20% of the inner bay of Fundy population of Atlantic salmon. What this program does is we collect those those juvenile salmon, they're called salmon smolts, they're leaving the river to go to the ocean. We collect a portion of them and we take them to the world's first marine conservation farm on the island of Grand Manan. And really what we're doing is we're just protecting them, helping them get through that, that critical marine stage where we see a lot of mortality. And once they've uh, grown to maturity, usually one to two years, as you've seen today, that those fish now go back to their river to spawn naturally. So we're trying to minimize the amount of handling and human intervention. We're really just trying to protect them very, during these critical stages and get them back in the river to spawn on their own. Um, but they're collected from this river. So when they're leaving this river, we, they, we use um, called smolt wheels or a rotary screw trap, it's just a big floating drum. And we collect the fish that way. Um, and so we know that they're coming from here because they're on their way out of this river. Mm -hmm. We know that the inner bay of Fundy population, at least in the 80s before that real collapse, was about 40,000 fish in, in across these rivers. Um, and the Petakodiak River, it accounted for about 20% of that. So this is a really critical river to, to restore and rebuild these populations. 20%? Was, yeah, 20% yeah. of the entire inner bay of Fundy population originator came from this river. So it's really important that this river gets back up and running. Because now it's been reduced to almost nothing, isn't it? Yeah, so the last estimate um, in the uh, mid, uh, about 2012, I think, uh, was about 200 or so uh, salmon left in the wild. And that's, I mean, cr critically endangered to say the least. So we, um, we're really trying to real, re build that back up. So to put 800 back is a huge you know, step in that right direction. And you've already seen some success, haven't you, in the in um, Fundy National Park? Yes, absolutely. So we're um, we're seeing numbers uh, steadily increase there in terms of uh, adult num adults returning, uh, the juveniles being produced, uh, the the positive uh, ecosystem effects. Of, you know, salmon are real ecosystem engineers, and so they're they're responsible for keeping these rivers healthy. Um, so we're seeing those those uh, positive effects there. But we're also starting to see that here in the Petakodiak now with more and more adults starting to come back, more juveniles being produced. And you know, it's not just that these juveniles are being put there, they're born there. So now these are Petakodiak River fish and I think that's really, really important. At least one difficult question remains. What is killing salmon in their wild habitat? Along with overfishing, conservationists often point to habitat destruction due to forestry practices, the damming of rivers and climate change. And some conservationists have long maintained that open net salmon farming also harms wild fish due to factors such as disease and pollution. That raises questions about one of the main partners in the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program, Cook Aquaculture. The 800 mature salmon that were released into the wild this month were raised at the Wild Salmon Marine Conservation Farm in Grand Manan. That's where the fish are exposed to wild ocean conditions to improve the likelihood they'll survive after they're released. The facility is run by Cook Aquaculture, part of a family-owned multinational group of companies. Cook operates under more than a dozen brands and has fish farming and harvesting sites in Canada and around the world. Industry officials dispute criticisms about fish farming, saying their methods are ecologically sound. And they take credit for applying specialized industry knowledge to the salmon restoration effort. Marine salmon farming is in fact the most environmentally sustainable animal production on the planet. It has the lowest freshwater use, the lowest carbon emissions, and ocean <laughs> aquaculture technology is without a doubt allowing us to help address the decline in wild Atlantic salmon stocks here in New Brunswick. It makes perfect sense for us that we continue to apply decades of science innovations to successfully manage the world's first marine conservation farm in Graham and Ann. And I guess, you know, the big question uh, with respect to the wild populations, or a big question, if I may, is what's killing the wild <laughs> populations? Ah, uh, million dollar question. Um, I think, uh, you know, for so long, there were so many factors, and, and I always say it's kind of death by a thousand cuts, you know. Um, you know, historically, most of these rivers had dams on them. Um, there was a causeway, um, you know, there was all kinds in of... In Moncton. In Moncton, right. Uh -huh, yeah. So there was, a, you know, 
uh, intense logging. Um, you know, there's industry, uh, there was fishing. Uh, so it's hard to say if, you know, if any one of those was the cause, it probably wasn't individually, but when you have one thing after another after another, what happens is those cumulative effects start to drive down that population. Um, and with species like salmon, there's a tipping point and once you go past that it's hard to hard to get over it and that's when human intervention is needed to help them get back over that point so they can kind of recover on their own and uh you mentioned uh the the facility at grand manan where the the fish are reared yep um and uh um i you know i know that um uh, that's uh, that's run by by Cook Aquaculture. Um, you know, representatives from from that group were here today, and of course, you know, um, uh, I think that uh, you know some critics will 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 say uh, you know this is one thing that you know may be harming uh, f uh, fish in the Bay of Fundy is the is uh, aquaculture with disease and and whatnot. Um, you know, and the, and yet cook is itself is integral to this project so i don't know what what would you you know what's your take on that uh, i mean this is an industry that knows how to grow lots of lots of fish lots of salmon and that is a critical part of this program is we need to grow lots of salmon we need to rear these salmon to maturity um and so they have been an integral part of this program because they're helping innovate wild salmon rearing in the ocean. So this has never been done before. We're the first to, to try and rear these fish from smolt to adult and put them back in. Um, and so, yeah, we, we rely heavily on their expertise to progress that that field, that science of how do we do this? Um, and so, yeah, they've been, a, they've been a, a, big, a big help in that. Do you think that aquaculture could be harming wild salmon in the Bay of Fundy? No, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's a tough question. One thing for certain is that many critics of commercial fish farming operations want them removed from the sea altogether. Marine biologist Inka Maluski has called for a transition to closed containment aquaculture instead of open net pens. In an email, she welcomed any initiative to restore wild fish stocks, but said this species faces many, many challenges. It remains to be seen if the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program will get the kinds of results needed to restore the endangered plantain. For the NB Media Co-op, I'm David Gordon Koch. Our relationships with each other, with our forests, with our salmon. These are all the vital pieces of the puzzle that help us enhance the, the future to build a stronger tomorrow for our children, our great-grandchildren, and as we, you will hear us often say, the next seven generations. The work being done through this innovative recovery model has been successful because of our dedicated team and the relationships we have built together, all of us. Fort Folly, or my community, has always been stewards of the lands and waters of the Petticodiac River. Looking out today, I am proud that we have risen as leaders in the salmon recovery. We have all become champions for the integration of our Mi'kmaq traditions, our wisdoms, and academia in conservation. We have all united in a collective pursuit of learning and the teachings of Ilnuitism. I may have said that wrong, I apologize. <laughs> we are here on the Pollitt River, which is a tributary to the Petticodiac River. Historically, the Petticodiac and its tributaries would have been home to about 20% of the total integrated <coughs> fundy Atlantic salmon population. A population estimated to have been about 40,000, but is now down to around 200. Covering this population as it is deeply intertwined in the heritage and culture of the Mi'kmaq people, of my people. The recovery of this endangered Atlantic salmon is not only about preserving a species, but about reclaiming and sharing our cultural identity, healing our historical wounds, and promoting sustainable stewardship of our lands and waters. Fort Folly is proud to be a founding partner in the Fundy Salmon Recovery. This partnership continues to innovate and build a recovery program like no other, one rooted in collaborative decision-making through the inclusion of the different industries, backgrounds, and ways of knowing. The release of over 800 endangered Inner Bay of Fundy Atlantic salmon into the blessed waters of the Petty Kodiak River watershed is a testament to the, de to the dedication and success of this team. The Fundy Salmon Recovery Partnership will continue to flourish because of the contributions it's making to reconciliation, education, local communities, and species at risk recovery. 
Fort Folly was recognized for our leadership in indigenous-led conservation by the North Atlantic Salmon Conservation Organization. Oh my goodness, it's a long one. Earlier this year, our efforts in collaboration with the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program are considered to be at the forefront of the wild Atlantic salmon recovery and ecosystem restoration globally. In conclusion, the journey we embark upon today, standing on the banks of the Pollard River, is one that echoes the profound teachings of Ilnuotisi. As you participate in the release today, take time to reflect on the significance of what you are doing. Acknowledge the fight of these salmon going back into their ancestral waters. In the days and years to come, remember the delicate balance we all must work together to maintain in our, our roles as stewards of these lands and waters. Our commitment to the recovery of the endangered Atlantic salmon is a promise to our heritage and a dedication to a sustainable future for generations yet to come. Let us continue to rise above the challenges together. This is how we will find a way forward towards a sustainable and thriving Mi'kmaq. Thank you. The salmon uh, will soon be arriving. Uh, earlier this week, we, we've already released uh, over 400 mature endangered Interbay of Funded Atlantic Salmon to four release sites on the Pollock River. Uh, and today we're releasing the other half of our 800 plus, another 400 uh, salmon uh, to this site and uh, two others on the, on the Pollock River. I want to uh, acknowledge and thank very much uh, uh, Delbert and Eloise Bannister, whose property we're, we're here uh, fortunate to be on today. Uh, they've been very uh, accommodating, gracious uh, to all our efforts to date, uh, as uh, many others uh, that I see in the crowd that live uh, on the on the Pollock River system and, and uh, otherwise uh, on the Petticoatiac or within the Petticoatiac River watershed, they really helped uh, Fort Folly reconnect, like with uh, the traditional uh, territory, uh, um, as we um, grew and, and reintroduced salmon, uh, because a lot of that knowledge had been lost. A lot of the the, the knowledge of, of the different pools and the access uh, points up and down the river. Uh, it was people here uh, in the Petticoatiac River watershed that helped the uh, Fort Folly staff and uh, leadership like, reconnect with those sites and, and uh, reclaim their, their, their role as, as stewards and keepers of, of the land and, and the creatures. Uh, so, it's been like a real privilege and an honor to, to work in this project all these years. And I feel that uh, through our collaborations and our, and our valued partners that we've really achieved like something very important and something very special. And uh, it's, 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 great. it's a great day. So thanks very much. It's such a pleasure to be back with all of these dedicated people that we have the great opportunity to work with. We haven't had an experience like this with Fort Folly for four years and it's been way too long. So we were really appreciated the effort that went into planning today so that we could all get together for this special day. I don't know about you, but releasing over 400 wild salmon is a great way to spend a Friday afternoon <laughs> celebrating wild salmon and the weather is definitely cooperating. So I'm so glad we're all here. The Atlantic Canada Fish Farmers Association is so honored to be part of this unique and truly rewarding collaboration that is Fundy Salmon Recovery. And to be here with Fort Folly First Nations to do this celebration. I've worked on a lot of collaborations over my career, but I can tell you this is a true collaboration. We are a true partnership. All of us bring something to the table, and I won't list all those partners again. Yet, but I might as well go on after uh, they've been named, but it's really an honor. This is an exa excellent example of wild Atlantic salmon recovery that is working. It's continuing to turn traditional salmon recovery enhancement programs on its head by proving that the less exposure fish has to captivity, the better it is for their fitness and survival. Our salmon farmers and our other member companies couldn't be more thrilled to be using their skills and knowledge to pioneer and expand this innovative, science-based approach. Hook Aquaculture, with the support of the Fundy Salmon Recovery Partners, supporters and collaborators, operates the world's first wild Atlantic salmon marine conservation site, which you've heard about and we like to talk about a lot. It's the world's first where wild salmon juveniles are grown to maturity in the ocean environment using farm 
fish farming technologies, <clears throat> which understand. Oh, sorry, I think I missed a page. Yeah. So, I want to take this moment just to say thank you to my association staff and the entire Fundy Salmon Recovery team because I've been able to see firsthand hours of effort that you've put into taking care of these fish and getting them here safely today. This project's success would not be possible without this collaboration between the aquaculture industry, all levels of government, scientists, First Nations, and community stakeholders who understand the interdependencies that must be acknowledged when you are attempting species, single species conservation. By working together, we are making a real change in these rivers, and we are seeing historic results in our wild Atlantic salmon populations in the Inner Bay of Sunday. So let's celebrate the success here today and tomorrow, and we will continue this great work with the FSR partners that include the province of New Brunswick, the village of Graham and Ann, UMB, Fisheries and Oceans, Parks Canada, Cook Agriculture, and of course, for all of these nations. Um, and I just want to say one more thank you and call out. All of this project started almost 20 years ago because of the next speaker that you're going to hear, Corey Clark. <laughs> <laughs> few years since I've been uh, able to get over to Elgin to, to help Fort Folly and everybody here in the community put some fish back in the river and it always surprises me how many people um, are here uh, on, a, on a work day that might have been if you're paying attention to the forecast that might have been a rainy day too um, so so thanks uh, to you and to your families for uh, making the effort that uh, allowed you to be here today special thanks to you Michelle um, those were great words um, to your family, to Chief Rebecca, to Chief Joe. Uh, this has been a long time uh, coming. And uh, how many years ago was it that we were running around the woods together? Do you know what it, like, it's, uh, that's, it's just amazing to see um, how far and how advanced um, an amazing group of people have, have brought this. Um, <coughs> salmon connections are deep here. You, you can see it. Um, since time immemorial uh, with indigenous nations, for local settlements and generations of, of people who have lived and, and uh, settled in these areas. And now, as a flagship species at risk recovery story that's uniting communities and cultures and all branches of science, uh, salmon connections are deep. I like to. T I'll, I'll try and do a quick timeline here. Um, Thirty years ago, growing up in this area, um, I grew up in the in the Sussex and, and Fundy area, across the road from Delbert and Eloise, as it turns out. Um, uh, so I've known them my my entire life. Uh, I remember being on riverbanks where my father and grandfather were angling for salmon. But by the time I was old enough to swing a fly rod, I wasn't. Uh, there were no salmon uh, to angle and. That didn't really leave a mark on me at the time. I didn't really think anything of it. But uh, years later, I started a, a career uh, in conservation with with Parks Canada, and uh, smartly right away met uh, met up with teams from Fort Folly, and we began working on um, salmon restoration in Fundy National Park because of uh, Chief Joe Knockwood's commitment to this species in this area and, and his community and his nation, and. Um, Years later, uh, after learning and growing together with our Fort Folly partners, we had an open invitation from the aquaculture industry who was interested in uh, areas that we might be able to collaborate um, in science. And um, of course, you can imagine, uh, especially 15 years ago, um, our, our mandates were then and continue to be independent. We, we do different things. But we have a mutual interest. This entire project team has a mutual interest in real action to change the state of salmon in our rivers. And that led to what you've heard described already as, as the Fundy Salmon Recovery uh, Program, a, ho a whole bunch of firsts and um, the world's first sea farm dedicated to growing only wild salmon that are being released to spawn naturally the next generations of fish. 
and now uh, those adult releases of, of, of adult salmon which were uh, collected as juveniles from these rivers are returning uh, on their own steam to spawn naturally the next generation, further contributing uh, to, to more fish uh, in, these, in these rivers. To think that adult salmon would be visible in pools of Fundy National Park reliably each fall as they've been for the last five, six, seven years you know, if you told me that 10 or 15 years ago, I wouldn't really have thought that was possible. We were seeing years of zero fish, zero returns, ones or twos. And now, um, now we're maybe even a little, uh, a little too big for our britches, expecting dozens <laughs> or more uh, to come back and maybe being a little disappointed if there's not more than dozens. And I think that's a, that's a great thing. So I think this collaboration, one th of the things really strikes me over the last few years, um, our collaboration and our ability to to work together and play to each other's strengths uh, has brought salmon back uh, to these rivers. But I really think that those salmon being in those rivers has brought community and culture back to the rivers. So the fact that the fish are there really is the reason that we are all here uh, today, isn't it? Like we, we wouldn't be here if, if it wasn't for those fish. So the fish are really doing their job to bring this community and culture back. Um, in ways that really weren't possible before. And this project is really embracing the idea that that cultural connection is, is it like that connection of the, of the culture and connection of the community to the river and to the fish is as, is as important for the fish to recover and the river to recover as the scientific methods that we kind of uh, forged the, the start of this work on. And I feel like uh, our indigenous collaborators and nations have known this since time immemorial, uh, how important uh, that mutual connection is between people, culture, river. Um, so I'm really glad to see this program's embracing that. The biggest contribution of the Fundy Salmon Recovery Collaboration and the rivers that we're working on might be ecological. Maybe it is. Uh, there's fish in rivers where there wasn't before. There's natural spawning. There's fish coming back. Um, maybe the biggest contribution is ecological. But it might also be, um, the biggest contribution might also be that this is a proof of a concept um, that there can be an alternate way uh, to do things based on uh, collaboration that uh, we can demonstrate to, to the world, to this community, to anybody who would like to look and learn um, that the restoration of ecological and cultural integrity is likely connected and it is possible. Um, we share this message with thousands of people uh, every year. And the presence of these salmon allows that connection. And, and that connection likely benefits conservation in other areas. So that's another thing. Just the fact that people can come and see and learn about this work likely has a, a good effect on, on other rivers or other populations of animals elsewhere. You see that something is possible and you have a connection to conservation because of it. I think the work shows it can be a measurably better future for salmon and river ecosystems and their communities uh, than, the, than the present reality in a lot of places uh, currently suggests. So the idea that um, there would be hundreds of fish returning to rivers in the fall, um, like I said, was a bit foreign maybe. I wouldn't have believed it 15 uh, or 20 years ago because they're was just so little fish, no, no fish in most cases, and they had been gone for so long. And to think that if somebody would have said, um, the future will be better than this, uh, I don't know if I would have believed them, but we are proof that the future can be better than this. And I think that's a good message to take home because uh, salmon and river ecosystems in general are in, are in hard shape in a lot of places. And to, to give people hope in those places that it could be better in the future, um, particularly if you're open to collaboration and innovation. Uh, by no means is this work complete, by no means uh, is it perfect, um, but certainly by almost any measure that I have thought of, it's a drastically improved condition over where we were a decade plus ago, and that's because of the collaboration that you've heard about today. Uh, I'll, I'll end it there. Um, I hope you enjoy your time here today. Spend some time with the amazing people. Get to know people. If you don't recognize a face, just introduce yourself. <laughs> Um, I promise you, you like who you're going to meet. Um, so enjoy yourself this afternoon, release a fish, uh, and thanks very much for your time and for being here, everyone.
leadership from Corey and, and others is unbelievable. It, it's so impressive to work with this group. And uh, Cook Aquaculture is a founding partner in the Funny Sam Recovery Partnership. Um, I want to, on behalf of Cook and all of our staff that are here today and that are just completely dedicated uh, to the Funny Sam Recovery Project, I want to thank uh, Fort Folly First Nation and Fort Folly Habitat Recovery uh, for their ongoing commitment and partnership working with all of us. It's just a tremendous uh, collaboration. We're so proud uh, to be part of it. It's such a critical, critical conservation project um, at this time. Um, as uh, Corey and, and uh, Michelle and others said, you know, together uh, we are committed to listen, to learn, and to adapt as we move forward in this project. And all in the name of really helping to restore the Inner Bay of Funday uh, salmon, Atlantic salmon population. Our Global Chief Sustainability Officer for Cook recently said that the technology, equipment, and the knowledge and innovations that we're using to raise fish today have changed so dramatically from years ago. What remains the same, however, is the urgent need to address the decline of wild uh, Atlantic salmon stocks in New Brunswick. Marine salmon farming is in fact the most environmentally sustainable animal production on the planet. It has the lowest freshwater use, the lowest carbon emissions, and ocean <laughs> aquaculture technology is without a doubt allowing us to help address the decline of wild Atlantic salmon stocks here in New Brunswick. It makes perfect sense for us that we continue to apply decades of science innovations to successfully manage the world's first marine conservation farm in Graham and Ann in Dark Harbor. Cook supplies and installs the custom marine conservation farm and our staff, many of them are here today, are the daily caretakers of the wild salmon that Corey talked about. They really care for them through feed and nutrition, health monitoring and equipment maintenance every day. Our trained cook staff use their knowledge and technology to ensure that appropriate feed is used at the right time. That fish transfers back to the wild, and you saw some of them today unloading them from, from the trucks. They're conducted with as little stress as possible for the fish. And on-site farm infrastructure provides the appropriate care until the wild salmon are ready to release back to their native waters, like here on the Pollock. I want to thank our people for their work on this project in fish health, in transportation, and at the Grand Marianne Conservation Farm for all their hard work caring for these fish that are going back into the river today. I want to thank Matthew Ingersoll, Stanley, who's over here, uh, Sean Neary, Todd Clinch, Roger Simmons, Jeff Cook, uh, Allison Brown, Matthew Kimball, Robin Mazerol, Tom Taylor. Randy Griffin, and anyone else who's worked on this project from our team. We've got a lot of resources assigned to this project, and we're entirely committed to it. Given the success of the Fundy Salmon Recovery Project, other communities are now looking at this model, and Corey alluded to that. Cook Aquaculture has now partnered with the Medway River Salmon Association in Queens County, Nova Scotia, to explore a wild Atlantic salmon recovery project like the one here in New Brunswick. Research has been underway to collect data about the existing Atlantic salmon population on that river to help guide what a recovery project could look like. At Cook, our purpose is to cultivate the ocean with care, nourish the world, provide for our families, and build stronger communities. As a New Brunswick-based family company, our work right here at home holds special meaning. Wild Atlantic salmon recovery is at the heart of our sustainability and conservation efforts. From all of us at Cook, we thank you for your ongoing commitment and collaboration to save this species from extinction. Thanks. I'm very fortunate to be a researcher with Fundy Salmon Recovery. I'm also the Parks Canada Research Chair in Aquatic Restoration uh, at the University of New Brunswick. And so I'm just I'm very happy to be here with you on these beautiful shores of the Paulette River uh, just to celebrate the progress and achievements that have been made uh, in Atlantic salmon recovery. Uh, this unique project really serves as a, as a conservation tool which has changed the face of Atlantic salmon restoration. Um, we've been able to clearly demonstrate that this model it really goes beyond just simply putting fish in rivers. You know, it's resulted in, in not only just putting fish in the rivers, but salmon are returning to the ocean on their own 
once again uh, to spawn. Uh, it maintains the connectivity between systems, whether it's aquatic, terrestrial, marine. Um, it's restoring the river ecosystem. It's giving it resilience. And it's just making healthier rivers. And I think that's really, really important. And I'm, I'm just so proud to share in these achievements and, and play a, a small role uh, in this really impactful work. And you know, we've, we've accomplished so many things, and I think these results so far really stand on their own. Um, I'm very honored to work so closely with Fort Folly uh, and the Habitat Recovery Team on this project. Uh, being at the, at the University of Brunswick, I'm part of training the next generation in, in conservation biologists, and I'm really proud to say that this program has worked with, with over 10 amazing students, many of which are here today. Uh, they're the ones doing all the real work to advance our understanding, and they're reshaping the way that we do uh, salmon recovery. I simply just sign forms for them. <laughs> um, so I think of uh, Inner Bay of Fundy Rivers, and really in particular, the Petakodiak River. It's not about conserving what's left. We have to remember, it's really about rebuilding a lost population. It's rebuilding what was once here. And that, a task of that magnitude can really only succeed through collaboration, like the one uh, we can all see here today. It is really, truly remarkable how much uh, we've achieved in such a short time. Um, just as a highly productive river is dependent on salmon, I think the funny salmon recovery model uh, is dependent on collaboration and community as well. So, uh, thank you, very, thank you all very much. Uh, like Corey and everyone else said, please get your hands dirty, get your hands wet, put some fish back in the river. It's a pretty amazing experience to do that. So, thank you all.